Welcome to a new In The Mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. We're gonna start with this thin roll of tape. It's six millimeters wide, it's double-sided tape, and it should be 18 meters in length according to the description. And this is different because it's really the uh, thin stuff and it's transparent. So there are use cases where you want a very small and thin piece of double-sided tape. For example, maybe you want to attach some kind of LCD or OLED screen to the back of a PCB and you don't have enough space to use the regular thicker double-sided tape that everyone knows or maybe you're attaching a battery inside an enclosure. Well, this should be handy in those situations. So as usual, you will find a link to this in the description below the video so you can order one. Next up, I got another cassette of heat shrink tube for the label printer and this time it's black on white. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB.com who recently upgraded their offer so you now get 24 hours turnaround time and you can choose any solder mask color for the same price of just $2. Prototyping is now faster and cheaper so it's definitely worth checking them out. If you are not familiar with this you should watch Voltlog 237 and 238 where I showed how uh, I managed to print on this heat shrink tube with my labor printer even though it does not support this kind of cassettes natively. In those videos I was experimenting with uh, black on yellow tube but you can also get it as black on white so I ordered one of these as well. It's uh, the same 5.8 millimeters width and 1.5 meters long um, length inside this cassette. So let's do a test print to see how this uh, looks. So here is the result. As shown in the videos I mentioned, I had to trick the printer uh, for printing on these by masking some of those identification holes on the cassette, but uh, it works really well now and I can print on these. Next item is a battery boost module, but a bit more advanced than what you're used to seeing. This was recommended by one of my Patreons who was experimenting with uh, boost circuits. And you should check out my Patreon page which is linked in the description below. It's a great way of supporting the channel and getting in touch with me. So first this module uses a uh, TPS61088 uh, from Texas Instruments which is quite a uh, capable 10 amps fully synchronous boost converter. And it's unlikely you will get 10 amps out of uh, this design. The inductor certainly looks like it's not rated for that. But nonetheless, uh, it's quite a capable boost inverter chip they used on this module. But the designers of the module also included a second chip, which is the FP6601Q. That is a fast charge and quick charge management chip. It basically watches the USB data lines and uh, as it detects a quick charge device requesting a higher voltage, it will adjust the output of the boost converter up to 12 volts. So that makes this a pretty nice module and the only thing missing from a fully functional power bank is a battery charging circuit and some batteries. I really like this module, it could be a nice starting point for many projects. However, you need to be aware of its limitations. First, I don't think this could safely output more than 4 amps, maybe even 4 amps is too much for this uh, inductor. And secondly, this is just something I've uh, noticed uh, now, uh, there doesn't seem to be any solder on the uh, mechanical attachment points for the USB connector. So before using this, it would be a good idea to uh, maybe solder these securely in place. I might take a closer look at this module in a uh, future video and maybe do some testing to see how much it can really output if it gets hot or not or maybe measure the uh, output noise level.
Next, I have another interesting module which I found and this one is based on the IP5306 and this chip is wonderful, I mean not necessarily for its performance or specs, I don't even know if it meets the claims of the datasheet, but just the level of integration they have on this uh, chip is awesome. You have an 8-pin chip that is both a synchronous switch mode boost converter as well as synchronous lithium battery charger working on the same inductor. And this also has a switch trigger input as well as battery level indicator with four levels. And they did all of this with just an 8-pin IC. So I don't know if you can boost and charge the battery at the same time given the fact that the circuit is using the same inductor. So I can't really explain how that works. But here's a clever way of driving four LEDs with just three pins. If you do a Google search for IP5306, you will find the, the datasheet in Chinese, but you can translate the document with one of the online services for translating PDFs, and you can learn some interesting stuff from the datasheet of this uh, chip. For example, I learned that they also make other variants of this chip, which uh, support higher currents for boost and charging, as well as quick charge protocol management. So I would expect this chip being part of many entry-level power banks being sold under uh, maybe tens or hundreds of different brands, because most importantly, it can provide decent cost reduction by integrating all of the functionality in a single 8-pin chip. I mean, they even claim battery protection features are implemented in the uh, chip, so there's no need for additional battery protection circuitry. Next, also on the same uh, page, I have a module that can charge the battery and also boost the voltage up to 5 volts to amps, or so they claim. The battery charging is uh, handled through the micro USB input by a TP4056, and I'm sure everyone knows the TP4056, it's a linear 1 amp battery charging circuit. And on the uh, boost side, we have an unidentified 6 pin SOT device. As usual, the filtering and the size of the inductor don't seem adequate for a stable 2 amps output, but might do okay at 1 amp. It might be a good idea to add some ceramic capacitors on the output of this uh, boost converter to improve the filtering if you want to use this module. As a bonus, we get a small trimmer resistor for fine-tuning the output voltage of the boost. Next, I got some non-electronics items, but I think many of my viewers like the outdoors and exercising. Many of you might own a bicycle, so uh, you might enjoy these recommendations. I got some accessories. I got this nice pair of gloves, which was fairly inexpensive. I got this uh, nice bag, which is pretty spacious for uh, carrying. You can carry the mobile phone uh, under this transparent cover. Uh, and inside of here, there is uh, plenty of space for carrying a few tools uh, and whatnot. And above all, it has this uh, waterproof design with uh, the zipper is waterproof and you also get this uh, cover inside, which I believe you can use to cover everything if it re it's really pouring outside. So uh, what you put inside here, it's likely not going to uh, get wet. In this particular size, it can fit my iPhone 8 Plus, but they also have smaller sizes in case you have a uh, smaller device. Um, I also got this fancy LED light, uh, which you can attach to the uh, bar of your saddle. Um, it's really nice because it has a built-in rechargeable battery, uh, which you can access via this uh, micro uh, USB port. And you get this uh, switch uh, that allows you to turn it on. It has multiple flashing patterns and it just looks really cool and it's bright. I believe you can find these with other shapes like a square or triangle uh, or maybe other variations as well, but this is the one which I liked uh, the best in a circle shape. If I would have purchased these locally, they would have uh, costed double, at least double, and most importantly, it's harder to find um, or to have these many options when buying locally. So that's why I opted for AliExpress uh, and as usual I will post links to these items in the description below the video. 
Next I have a set of uh, M2 by 4 mm long screws and these are pretty small screws I didn't have any in my lab and I needed some recently for attaching this self-contained module to a PCB for mechanical stability. There was plenty of space available on the module to have bigger screws but the designers uh, decided to use M2 screws which don't make much sense to me but maybe they had their reasons. Next I got one of these hemostat clamps, I've never had one before but I think it could be useful for holding small stuff and it has this uh, clamping action so once it's, uh, it's locked you don't have to continue putting pressure on this, it should uh, remain locked and keep whatever you clamped in here secure. This is normally a medical device used for clamping uh, blood vessels but it has quickly made its way into electronics and the one I have here doesn't really feel like it's um, good quality it's definitely on the uh, cheap side to say so and uh, there's also this curvature towards the end of the tip which I'm not sure it's, uh, it's by design but ultimately this will be holding small wires or component leads so it should work even at this level of quality Next I have this 6 pin ribbon cable with uh, female headers on both ends. The wire is about 30 centimeters long and here is uh, one of my programmers and on this one I have a uh, long wire installed, this is about a meter long but I also have a second programmer which I want to uh, keep with the shorter wire because sometimes it helps to, to have the long wire while other times when I'm just working on my desktop on a small module it's a mess of wires that uh, get tangled so then I prefer to have a short wire so that's why I ordered this uh, spare one. Next up a small JST EH battery balance plug with uh, what appear to be silicon wires and this one has female and male connectors. Now GST EH has a 0.1 inch pin pitch or that's 2.54 millimeters and I need this for a project where I'm connecting a battery to a board. Whenever you need some form of wire with JST connectors there is a high chance you will find that product listed as RC parts because JST connectors are widely used in RC hobby industry. That's the case with this wire as well, it's called a balance plug for 2S batteries and I paid 86 cents and I got both the uh, board connector uh, as well as the wire plus matching connector to go to my battery and this is delivered for 86 cents which is not a bad deal at all. And the last item in uh, this video, I got two rolls of mechanic solder wire and if you've been following the channel you might have seen that I use mechanic solder paste for soldering SMD boards for a few years now but I never tried the soldering wire they make. And I recently saw a video from fellow YouTuber SDG Electronics where he compared a bench full of different solder wires including ones from mechanic and they did very well in his test close to the other ones costing 10 times as much. I'll put a link to that video in the description below so you can check it out. I decided to try this myself and ordered these two rolls but upon receiving them I noticed something which may or may not mean anything. Uh, I got these from the same seller and on the labels if you watch closely they have slightly different font sizes like the one on the left is larger than the one on the right and the label has some differences in uh, between the two for example uh, if, we, if we look here this one says diameter this one says dime and that's really really strange uh, this one which correctly says diameter also has a um, hologram on the side uh, but uh, there are also other differences on this side label. label. For example here where uh, this one has the hologram this one has a barcode. So I'm not sure if these mean anything if one is fake the other one is genuine or the other way around. Um, I don't know if this one might have had a hologram at some point or it fell but that's unlikely because usually these hologram stickers um, are uh, really well adhered to the surface so they don't uh, easily um, uh, get lost. 
I think I'm gonna try to get in contact with the manufacturer to see if they can say anything on the subject and uh, maybe I'll give an update in a future video. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was interesting and you found something new and useful to order. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you again in my next video.